What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Alright, this story's called, Idiot Roommate Doesn't Respect My Religion and Trashes My Things. Hello Reddit. It's been a while since I posted, but I am back with something juicier than ever. This story is from when I had gone to university and it makes me puff smoke out of my ears and nose. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Background. The other day I had gone shopping for shoes. I heard about a new drop at Foot Locker, so being the sneakerhead I am, I went. Instead of buying the pair of shoes I had originally wanted, I found a pair of shoes that I had when I had gone to university. A pair of Jordan 11s. This reminded me of the horrible roommate that I had to live with. When I had finished high school, I had a huge knack for drawing and math. I'm not gonna say maths, you freaking weirdo. The best profession, which included these things, was of course architecture. I talked to my parents about it and they were ecstatic, I'm assuming. So we looked for a good university and what my housing arrangement could be. I ended up going to university which was about two hours away from where my parents and I live, which was really lucky. I found an apartment which I would be sharing with three other dudes and I moved out. I brought a couple of things with me, however. This is a good time to mention I was Muslim and proud. Assalamu alaikum brother. The place I was going to be living at was with three other white guys, so I knew I had to be careful. Being Muslim, it is strictly forbidden to eat anything that wasn't halal. Okay, I'll take it easy. <laughs> now, halal food is a majority of things. Vegetables, fish, spices, etc. But the one thing you cannot have is pork, okay, good, or meat that hasn't been prepared in a halal way. I'm a little more lenient with that. So a couple of things I had brought with me were some dishes, cutlery, and a frying pan. This is because if a surface has been touched by something not halal, haram, it is not ethical to eat from it. So I made sure to do this, or rather my mom did. I also brought clothes, shoes, and devices. When I moved in with the other three dudes, they were so amazing and understanding. I can't stress how nice they were. They helped me set up and they understood everything I told them. So we went along with studying and the only minor issue any of us had was how there was a spare room, but we couldn't use it. This was was in case someone else wanted to move in. We had made agreements on who cooked food on what days. I would make my own food every day because I didn't feel comfortable eating their stuff, but I cooked for everyone when it came around to my turn because one, they loved my food, my mom's recipes, and two, it would be extremely petty not to. Now that I've told you all of the necessary things, time for the entitled bit. One day, our landlord calls to tell us that a new person would be moving in with us and that he would live in the spare room. A couple of us had started putting stuff in there as our rooms were quite small so we had to move it. He came the next day with his parents to check out the apartment. Words can't describe how stuck up he was. He came with his nose high and his mom behind him. They had the I'm better than you look and glared us down. It was a sickening sight. The very first thing he did was tell us how he wanted things to be, which I mean fair enough, but then it started getting out of hand. He said the bathroom was his from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock so he could get ready for school. He said he didn't want us to cook anything with lamb because he didn't like it. He thought he also had the power to ban spices and the whole bunch of other things. I could see the look on everyone's faces. Like, is this guy okay? The best bit was he was dead serious. He left thinking he had all the power and was going to move in next week. After they left, me and my friends started bawling our heads off at how stuck up he was and how he expected us to do that. The dreaded day came when he moved in. We told him some of our requirements for him and he blew up. How could we expect for him to cook dinner once a week and that he couldn't have the bathroom all to himself? He was such a little turd. When I told him if he thought our rules were bad, he could just move out. The real kicker came when I told him I was Muslim. I can't remember all the slurs that were tossed at me for the next few months, but they included terrorist, bomber, how I was ruining the world, and how he always called me different things like Arab, Afghani, and Iraqi. I'm not sure he used my real name once. 
The worst bit was he decided to break every possible rule that I had told him. A couple of weeks had passed and his petty acts kept up. He would always run to the bathroom when I had to go and he would leave it filthy for me. Piss all over the seat, toilet paper everywhere, and just made it unusable. We complained about him so much, but the landlord wouldn't do anything. All of this stuff was manageable to a certain extent, but he decided to use my not speaking up against me. One morning, I woke up to the smell of bacon. No surprise, my roommates love it, and I didn't mind. I went into the kitchen to make myself some breakfast when I realized who was cooking. The entitled little turd. This was the first time I'd even seen him cooking. I walk over to grab a bowl of cereal when I realize what he was cooking with. My frying pan. I freak out. I grab him by the arm and pull him away. What the hell are you doing? I scream. Mike and breakfast, he said. With the biggest poo-eating grin imaginable, I felt like grabbing the saucepan and hitting him over the head with it. I take the saucepan and throw it in the sink with bacon flying everywhere. He looks at me with a smile and walks off. I go to my room and just sit there. I call the landlord and report him, but he says he's only been there for three weeks and didn't know. I just hang up. A couple of days pass and I'm still fuming. He did his petty toilet peeing act again as a cherry on top, but I wasn't having it. When he got out, I grabbed his shirt and threw him at the wall. I yelled at him to do it again and see what happened. He laughed at me saying that I was too scared to do it and that I didn't have the guts. I really didn't, but I wanted him to know that I wasn't having it. His next act became stealing my clothes. I would walk into the living room to realize that he was wearing one of my shirts and hoodies or shoes. I would make him take them off, but I didn't even feel like taking them back. I warned him the next time he did it, he would be sorry, but laughed again and said, what would I do? The tension between us only grew, and my roommate started getting worried because the next small petty thing I did, I would make sure would end up with him in the hospital hospital. A few months passed without incident. He still sometimes slipped on clothes as mine were nearly all name brand, but he would take it off instantly when he saw me. He wore quite old, uh, what you would call cheap clothes. There was nothing wrong with him wanting to wear something expensive, and I let my other roommate do it all the time. But I had zero tolerance for this butthole at this point, and he knew it. The final straw happened when he had a date with this girl. She was quite pretty, and it was so obvious he had zero chances with her. He left at around 3 that day, but I still had some classes, so I wasn't there when he left. He came back at 7 pretty happy, and I really couldn't care. He walked in and took off his clothes and tried to go into my room. I instantly saw this, and I walked in behind him. He was trying to put my shoes back. He had scratched up my Jordan 11s. I absolutely freaked out. He had creased them beyond repair. There were scratches and they were muddy. What the hell have you done? I screamed. They're only a pair of shoes. He laughed at me and threw them at my feet. I swung. I knew I shouldn't have hit him. It was only a pair of shoes, but what he had done to me for the past year was too much. I hit him square in the face, knocking him to the floor. We had walked into the living room arguing and everyone saw. He dropped to the floor bleeding from his mouth. My roommates were in shock and my knuckles were hurt from how hard I hit him. I called the police myself explaining what happened. A lot of stuff went down and I got a fine and a hundred hours of community service. I ended up knocking two of his teeth out and fracturing his jaw. I didn't receive any harsh sentence and because it was aggravated. He was charged with destruction of property for my $170 shoes and the tens of shirts he spilled stuff on which were anywhere from $30 to $50. But it doesn't in there. The girl he had the date with came out and said he had forcefully kissed her, and he got charged with that as well. His mother said a bunch of straight messed up things about her, and how she was lying and how her son would never do that. He got two years in jail as well as a couple of hours of community service. This was a long one, and I hope you enjoyed it. Moral of the story, never crease another man's jays. Um, <laughs> ah, that guy got his comeuppance, that's for sure. It sucks that this is still a problem for a lot of people.
Alright, this story is called Entitled Dad Follows, Threatens, and Harasses Employee Who Is On Break When Underage Entitled Kid Is Not Allowed Into A 17 Plus Movie By Himself. Warning, to maintain as much authenticity as possible, I will be quoting what the Entitled Dad said. There is language that is offensive, including homophobic slurs. Context. For those unaware, in the US, we do not allow unaccompanied children, 16 and under, into a rated R movie. They must be with a parent or guardian, basically someone 21 plus. Thus, whenever a high profile rated R movie is released, we station an usher at the door of the auditorium who checks tickets and IDs to ensure everyone is allowed in. Some kids buy tickets for another movie and try to sneak in. Other times, parents buy the tickets and then give them to their kid. FYI, even if the parent says that it's okay for the kid to go in alone, it is still not allowed. Story. My coworker, Bill, was stationed at the auditorium door and I was hanging out nearby just chatting with Bill and a couple of other ushers while waiting for another movie to end so that we could clean up. Two kids, eight or nine, come up to Bill with their tickets. Bill told them they couldn't enter without a parent. One of the kids, entitled kid, began to throw a mini tantrum. My dad bought us these tickets! He said we could come see it! We really want to see this movie! Sorry, but you're not allowed in without an adult. But he said we could come! We're allowed to see it! He said so! Bill, as he was required to do, stood his ground and didn't let the kids in, telling them they could either get a refund or have the dad come in with them. The kids left, out of sight, out of mind, as we went about our business. About 30 minutes later, Bill and I ended up on break at the same time and decided to walk down to the bookstore. The theater was in a large strip center. A couple of stores away was a large bookstore chain. As we walk through the lobby, Entitled Kid and his friend are talking to the Entitled Dad and they spot Bill. That's him! Entitled Dad stomps over to Bill, completely ignoring me, and begins to lay into him. Keep in mind, we were on break and had jackets on over our work shirts, clearly not on the clock. What's the matter with you? Not letting my kid into the movie? You got a problem with my boy? Sorry, no one under 17 is allowed into a rated R movie without an adult. Bill and I turned and kept walking, being on break and all, while the guy stood there steaming. Once we get outside and start down the sidewalk, we hear shouting from behind us. Entitled Dad, kids in tow, had followed us outside. Don't you freaking walk away from me! You're gonna let my kid in there! I said it's okay so he can go in without me. Go let him in right now! Bill, while still walking, you can speak to a manager if you want. Nothing I can do. Screw you and your manager. You're the butthole who stopped him, so you're gonna fix it. Sorry, but we're not on the clock. You can go back and speak to a manager if you want, but there's nothing we can do. Are you his boyfriend? Freaking bundle of sticks used for fuel, not letting my kid in. You're just a bunch of stupid freaking bundle of sticks used for fuel. Whatever. So we kept on walking, and he kept on following. Shout obscenities so we start laughing at how ridiculous it was getting, which made him even more angry. We make it to the bookstore and go in, walking over to the big display window that faces the sidewalk, and there is Entitled Dad, pacing back and forth as he glares at us, still shouting. He was loud enough we could still hear most of what he was saying. Get the hell out of here, you freaking bundle of sticks used for fuel! I'm not done with you! Someone ought to kick your freaking ass to teach you some freaking respect! Oh, on and on he went with that, but we just stood there laughing and ultimately mocking him. Not the wisest or most mature of choices, but I was 18 and dumb. After a couple of minutes of that, we went and browsed some books until it was time to leave. There was Entitled Dad, with the kids, just waiting for us. He spots us and begins shouting again, but we just keep on walking. He follows us all the way back to the theater, shouting the same types of things all the way back. When we get back to the theater, the guy shouts one final thing. I'll be waiting for you when you leave. Won't be so funny when I put your bundle of stick used for fuel ass in the hospital. When we get inside, Bill tells one of the police officers on duty about the guy and the officer takes care of it. Never saw or heard from or about the guy again. Pretty sure he got banned from the theater though. I like how y'all handled that. Um... <laughs> Because it, it's pretty funny when people blow up over nothing, but now we know where the kid gets his tantruming from. 
All right, this story is called My Mother is Entitled. Four months ago, I went to my drug addicted sister's wedding, and my wife revealed that I was married. I didn't tell my family I was married to avoid drama. What? Today, I got an odd call that went like this Hello? Wolf, can I talk to your wife, Anne? Why do you want to talk to my wife? Well, your youngest sister, Abby, wants Anne to do her taxes. Why would Anne agree to do your taxes? Anne is Asian and great at math, correct? Correct? Anne is great at math, but it's not because she's Asian. So will she do it? Not for free. Since I am the mother of her husband, she needs to comply with my wishes. Ah, uh, I will ask her about it. <laughs> Unplugs landline phone. Okay, now it makes sense why you might have hid the fact that you were married, but might not have been the best choice. You know, get rid of all the stupid stuff in the beginning. But then again, if it's incessant stupid stuff and you would know if it would be like that more than I I would, then I can understand keeping it from your family. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.